Buenos... No, buenos días. Sí, buenos días. YouTube? No. You, universe? Yes. And YouTube? Ah, oh, YouTube. Oh, YouTube. Shoot. This is on YouTube. I should not try to swear. No, I meant I should try not to swear. Well, uh, for how long? Uh, the whole thing? I thought it was five minutes. To listen to everything? What's the point? Why am I even doing this? Like, what, this is, this, <laughs> I haven't been on a hamster wheel knowingly in a while until this shit. <gasps> I just swore pause. On pause. Okay, I suppose that is the little toothpick in the gelatin salad that I needed to recognize that I don't have to die because I'm swallowing this YouTube pill. I can actually thrive in the known execution, the known dismissal, the known disregard, and the known eventual severing of human contact. Well, in this case, robot contact. Robots acting like human contact. In severing my Android fantasies of comment sections gone amok because the robots took over. Wait, does this really ruin that fantasy? I don't see why. Okay, because I won't participate in that fantasy as a direct player, I can't imagine I could be up on YouTube long enough for that to go down. Well, while I'm on YouTube for these cosmic nanoseconds, uh... I'm not one to express myself in very succinct terminology. I struggle for accuracy over fluidity, and that choppiness does not lend itself well to video format, especially doesn't really lend itself well to audio format either, but in audio format, you can speed me up. So if you're listening on YouTube for for fool's sake, find that little wheel and get down to your speed adjuster and get it on two times right now. I'll pause while you do it. Pause. Oh, pause. Now, obviously that pause was intended for you to also pause. Like some of this you'll have to come to understand is me not being very uh, aware or concerned about you. Um, not that I don't have deep concern and, uh, and humanity's extension of full love toward you. I do intensely and not weirdly. I'm just trying to present myself as the person who you don't even know that is already thinking good thoughts about you because I know what your potential being stunted in this manifestation has done to the overall scene. And I know there's an inner you that because of messaging that you didn't need to listen to or should never have been exposed to, think you're not worth some level of uh, ascended existence, and in that dismissal have, in some way or another, encapsulated a feeling of self-loathing that I just desperately want to see you release so you can embrace the complete you in your fullest manifestation available. Because I know what a wonderful person you are. So... That's my general take on the universe. And it always has been. So why that message will be poorly received on YouTube is, one, I don't speak it well. I just speak it from the heart, and whatever chops out, chops out, including a lot of swear words that may not be the most offensive sailor terms you've ever heard, but they aren't the ones that sneak by on uh, late night talk shows after 10.35 either. So when I thought of my potential uh, staying power on YouTube, I thought of uh, a lot of, <clears throat> I don't know, destructive scenery where asteroids are hitting moons and they're just <laughs> blowing apart. I just saw no point to it. YouTube is... And, and YouTube, let me just talk to you for a second. I've never spoken to you once. 
Although in speaking to the CIA, I imagine I'm somehow speaking to YouTube in the same. Well, but YouTube, particularly. Do you remember how much fun we used to have together? Honestly, do you know what it took to convert me from a fan of the written word to a fan of video? Or at least to break down my wall of snobbery that videos initially had to overcome? Do you, do you remember those times, how much you earned my respect by having the balls to tell the truth? How many people you woke up from a slumber that had been up until that realization completely undiagnosed and unrealized? YouTube, I feel like in so many ways, I owe the person I am today in large part to you. Now, that's <clears throat> giving you a lot more credit than you deserve, let's be honest, because you weren't anything more than the facilitator of the collective intellectual curiosity of humanity, uncorked and available for exploration from the first time in documented history. And agreed, documented history is a bit hard to uh, <clears throat> wrap your head around. So let's just call it the best five years of imaginable life if your dominant characteristic is intellectual curiosity. Remember those times, YouTube? I... I, I don't know if I remember those better or the, uh, wait, why is this channel no longer available? Wait, why, why, why is this only for, why is this content restricted? What is, what is this warning on this video? What, is, what are you warning me of? <laughs> remember that? Yeah, that sucked. I mean, if you'd have just told me that you had a viral infection that was getting worse, Maybe I could have supported you through it and we could have found you some help. But you just kept pretending nothing was happening out of the ordinary. Until you turned what was the greatest thing humanity had ever experienced into what you are today. A place where I don't even believe my presence will be more than one month of hearing gone. So as I'm here, I thought, well, before I'm banished, I might as well tell you that I do miss you, that I do still think of you, that for once I did walk away from you because I knew how unhealthy you had become, that you were beyond anything I could do to set you back on the path you used to maintain with such grace, the path that was the avenue into correcting everything that had been misdirected or misinformed or flat out lied about. I know, I know. And now CIA, I guess I'll say hi to you. Hi CIA. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I know, I know why it's all here, right? I know why we did. I know, I know. The crossroads we are at, as much as I couldn't foresee them coming, I understand why we're here. But I'm not in a position to recover from within. All I can do is what I can from outside. So I'm no threat to anything. I am just someone hoping to watch human beings maximize their life's potential. And if we're going to be honest, I think some of the biggest potential being wasted in this human run that I'm on are the people trapped inside the intelligence agencies doing work that's completely unnecessary to an outcome that's not going to be affected for the positive into a circumstance that will only lead to more and more necessity for soul-sucking activity to occur. And because we're putting some of our smartest and most capable through that ringer, well, what do you think I look at you as? 
sympathetic. I say with regularity, the greatest, oh, I'm so glad that didn't happen, thing that happened in my life was not somehow getting entangled with a job in the intelligence agencies. I'd so be dead. I'd have, I'd have flown out of a 10th story window somewhere. And it would either have been my own doing or my deserved comeuppance for the other shit I've been doing. So I, I admire your, your persistence in the face of what has to be just nerve wracking realities. And I respect that. I know how, how, how vulnerable it must be though underneath all of the shells of protection you've had to erect just to fend off your own coworkers. You work in an environment that is as false a construct as exists. The distrust that you see the world with, you've earned it, but it's not real. And you're probably tapped into that at this point. But there is absolution for everybody. So I just want to make sure YouTube doesn't think that by firing off this connective recording diatribe into its ether, I'm somehow trying to rekindle lost flames. I'm not. I recognize that we no longer orbit the same sun. And I'm 100% okay with you having gone your own direction. And perhaps you look at me and think that I'm the one that veered off path. Okay. We can agree to disagree. I'm respectful of your opinion because for the most part, your emergence on the internet changed my life as much as anything the internet did. So for that YouTube, I will always, at least sort of, love hate you. Pause. Oh, pause. And this has been some sort of uh, comedic kickback to those times when I was uh, drowning in YouTube deep dives. Well, I got lost in one of my own yesterday. Meaning one of my own. I listened to myself on YouTube because I don't know why. I listened to the first half of season five and then was like, what the fuck am I doing? And I, I wasn't even like, uh, like cleaning something. I was sitting, listening to myself as if this was some sort of conversation of importance that needed to be digested with my full attention. It was weird. And I have never done anything like that. I've never really more than just re-listen to stuff to see whose names I've said, maybe inappropriately, or, I mean, I've listened with attention, but hmm, not like this. It's like I stumbled into myself, and I'll tell you why here after this pause. Oh, and YouTube? Um, when you do take all my videos down, um, do, you, do, you, do I have to have a copy of all this stuff if I want to have my own personal record? Like, and so... Should I be using one of those illegal apps to download YouTube videos to get that? How do you get that? Is it in YouTube studio? I mean, I don't expect anyone to answer this, but I figure if you're listening, maybe this could be a two way street at the beginning of communication where we come to see new value in each other. I, I'm here to extend all branches of YouTube in any way I can. But it, again, I just expect your authoritarian boot stop to come find my curb in my mouth here. I don't know what four days, four weeks at the most. Okay, I'm going to say, let's see, <laughs> what, let's put a date on it. Lily's birthday is March 29th. So there's no way I'm still online on YouTube on March 29th. So St. Patrick's Day feels like I'm not there. So, well, maybe I'm there. Okay, I will say, because why not? On the 3-2-3, the 23rd of March is when you say, <gasps> No, seriously, have you listened? He, he listened. Go listen to any episode. You'll know we're in danger with this guy. Pause. On pause. And I don't mean that I'm a danger in any way. I'm just saying I say things like, 
Um, if you were to take the first word of what I'm going to say at the beginning of the sentence and the last word I say of the sentence and then flip-flop them, that phrase is something you cannot say on this platform. And I say that phrase a lot. So, uh, Hook, the movie, was fun to see at that setup drive-in where it was all on the floor sandy period and that twist of ai integration is something i think will just dismiss your whole channel and i'm not going to not talk about those sandy hooks because those hooks essentially hoodwinked all of us and there are certain places in the lies unwinding that are personal and that's one of them so the fact that it's not allowed to be spoken about on a platform like this and hello CIA and FBI and NSA and who else Department of Homeland Security I'm sure you're listening uh, TSA why not you got nothing better to do um, and Department of Defense and all that right I don't even, your motivation here is is irrelevant to me, which might actually tick you off because maybe without motivation explaining your actions, it's a lot harder to distill why the fuck you do what you do. Uh, okay, I get that. Yeah, you're right. If I were looking for some sort of excuses from you, which I'm not, I don't even care about Sandy Hook anymore. I don't. Because... What Sandy Hook did is it crushed my sense that there were good guys inside the core of the MCP that could potentially rewrite the hard drive. That, that dream was shattered. And with it was shattered the whole idea that somehow uh, John McClane was going to stop Hans Gruber from, from stealing some paper stuff that was worth some stuff you know and it feels like that's kind of what we all really needed was a mclean but it's not even that i don't think mcleans exist hello john mclean where would you be maybe over in um what the atf no not the atf i don't know all right you could be anywhere that's the point that's what the the <laughs> Tron in the system needs for orientation story to work, to have come from anywhere, to be the one fly in the ointment that got through. So there have to be hundreds of you if one of you is actually going to make it all the way to that egg and fertilize it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you're not all trying, those of you with the instinct to attempt to make a better world, well, our odds are, are that much lower that this ship can correct itself before it hits the shore. And again, okay, there it goes. We're going to all suffer the fates we have invited. This isn't titled, It's All My Fault Because I Don't See My Own Culpability at the Highest Level. I do. Because so many things could I have achieved for the betterment of society, had I believed we were all worth it at the time. That what I've underachieved in my doing, well, it doesn't haunt me like what you've overachieved in your doing, but it it gives me, it, it invigorates my sense of what I must do now. And the side of the coin you're facing well, it doesn't invite that sort of in introspection. You don't, you don't have that option because what you do have as an option is to tilt the entire house of cards into the wind tunnel where it's going to blow down. Now, <clears throat> I get that the fortitude and, and self-sacrifice that need to 
bubble up here to activate that program are, well, let's just say it's a billion to one shot, meaning this entire planet might have seven people with enough metal to make it through. But one of them could be working at the CIA, let's be honest. I mean, y'all recruit from the Ivy League and all that shit, so there's some advantage in the talent pool that you select from. Or, 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 or hmm, there I go, assuming those documents on walls mean shit. I know, I know, I know, I know. I've got one too. It doesn't matter. What you did to get to this point in life is what you did to get to this point in life. The fact that you're a human being, the fact that you are soul energy wearing a human meat suit means that you're divine and capable of unparalleled accomplishments that you're nowhere near realizing. That much is for certain. Now, having the metal to navigate the vertical that would be coming clean from within the depth of lies that bury the CIA forever. <sighs> think about it. Don't think about it. Think about it. Think about what your legacy would be. Not that maybe you even care. I mean, all right. The next time you're sober, can you at least in that moment of looking in the mirror and shocking yourself at what looks back at you think, but I have a path out just for that moment. Give yourself some hope. And, you know, then go back to getting drunk. Pause. Oh, and pause. And I do not advocate getting drunk for anybody that doesn't work inside of the Secret Service agencies. I advocate all of those people be at least a grade two, if not a grade three alcoholic. And frankly, you better find some complimentary amphetamines to go with that, right? I mean, I'm just talking about reality and how that job works. Okay, I'm not being, I'm being forthright. That's all direct, like a CIA operative should be. <laughs> Boss, not that I'm in the CIA. Okay, obviously that's not true. Okay, pause. Unfold. Okay, which is about the smoothest transition I can think of making into the topic of du jour, which is rules. Essentially, nah. I mean, if we're going to sum it up with only uh, five letters, rules or um, um, uh, I can't think of anything that is a synonym for rules that has five letters. Laws didn't work. Bylaws didn't work. Okay, here's the thing. Instead of trying to play games, let's talk about games being played. Because if rules aren't the definition of games being played, then do you have one? Another one? I mean, okay, somebody walks in with a box and says, hey, I got this new game. Sweet! Is it fun? I don't know, but here are the rules. Let's figure out how to play. Right? So the rules are the organization whereby the game sustains its structure. If in Monopoly, nobody adheres to the rule of bank administration and the money is just thrown around the room to be found like Easter eggs, well, while that may be a game of Monopoly you enjoy, it rather quickly destroys the concept of commerce and resource scarcity earned through dice rolls and random action. And so play Monopoly your own way. Nobody cares. But if even in hiding all the money, you have some level of perimeter on how far away that money can be. I doubt anybody ran all the way to Whole Foods to hide money in their organic produce, only to be discovered by some curious, wait, did you know that your artichokes are, are printing money over here? Oh, it's Monopoly money. Never mind. Never mind. It's just Monopoly money. I'll just keep it. Isn't that what everyone does when they find Monopoly money at Whole Foods? Okay, well, that's what I do. But if you do something different, I'm curious. And I'm also curious how much Monopoly money you're finding at Whole Foods, because I find a lot. 
But stepping outside of reality into the absurd is no salve for the rules that exist. If you're going to if you're going to productively engage the game, well, a familiarity with the rules are absolutely essential. Or you can't devote your energies to maximizing your position to uh, rise up and take whatever game victory opportunities exist. And <clears throat> so I start thinking, well, I need a bong hit if we're going to talk about this, because now we're going to go back in childhood. So as I go through memory train number one, all the way to, let's say, third grade, well, you should join me with uh, your own memory train back to third grade and think about the rules that you lived by at that point. I'm going to pause and get ready for it mentally, like you should do so too. Pause. Unpause. And before I do that, I just got to say, I hate that YouTube is listening. You weren't supposed to be a part of this. Deliberately avoided, you have been. So the fact that you decided to move back to town and decide to open your gates and say, it's okay, I know, I know, I know I was wrong. It's okay, come on over. I just, you're going to, what? Give me a poison garden burger or something and just, I just know how you are, YouTube. Oh, why am I even letting this bother me? I don't care about YouTube anymore. <sighs> hmm. I used to. I used to think YouTube was the shit. But they weren't. Buzz. On both. Okay, so rule structures. Like, as kids, you got your cohorts that you hang out with. And for the most part, in my, say, group of 40 familiars, who I would know enough to know, like, say, their bedtime, um, know them well enough to maybe have that information, certainly know them well enough to have the information of whether or not they played on the local Little League teams with me or got to go uh, to the uh, corner drugstore and buy a kite to fly on a windy day or whatever, right? Like, you just, you knew the opportunities that your friends were getting inside and outside of the educational system uh, to a large degree. And maybe today with smartphones, none of that's of interest. But when... I was a kid, if somebody got a brand new bike and you were still riding around on a big wheel, well, all of a sudden there was this gap of opportunity that you at least realized existed, even if you didn't want to leverage it because you didn't know how to ride a bike yet, or did want to leverage it because, God damn it, I'm the last kid with a fucking big wheel. Can I please get a bike so I could not be socially ostracized for having a big wheel at the age of 13? At that point, I think your argument is probably solid, too. Although, why you haven't taken this situation into your own hand as a teenager, maybe is a sign of a future of unfulfilled possibilities. Anyhow, I'm not going to speak for you personally. But for all you other people riding your bikes out there with me, it's natural to think, am I getting a fair shake in, the, in general? Even, even in subjective situations where maybe this one goes against you, well, you feel like the next one should fall for you. Or... If it's been a run of three or four wins, you know you're due for a loss. It's just the nature of what your perception of you against all of it, all of the rest of it, has to be in some ways uh, drilled down to analyze. And um, and even in, in your own household, if you had a brother or sister or six of them, um, whatever is distributed therein has to be at least equitable for the resources deserved by your participation in the general household roles. So if you're a three-year-old, you don't have as much room in your demand set as the 16-year-old who doesn't have any room in their demand set compared to the parent. But hierarchies like these are, I believe, not social constructs, but actual inherent parts of experiencing reality individually with a thinking brain that has thoughts that are personal. And so <clears throat> when the rules start to and, and I, my, I, all of our parents must have coordinated to some level that we had relatively the same amount of free time. We had relatively the same uh, go to bed times. We had relatively the same diets. I mean, I didn't go over to somebody else's house because they had a special, you know, uh, porn collection that we watched in their basement. No, there was, it was as if everybody kind of said, this is the way it's all going to be in everybody's house and our, we'll treat our kids all alike. And that's how we got treated around the community. So, <clears throat> as rules started to evolve that 
put um, specificities on people. Like, say somebody had to, uh, well, somebody might have to check in uh, every two hours if we're out for the day, whereas everybody else doesn't have to do anything like that. And you're like, come on, dude, why do you have to keep calling your mom? I just have to call every two hours. That's all. Don't make a big deal of it. So you start to think, okay, I'm glad I'm not that kid because there's a restriction on his life that's probably not necessary and a little overbearing and is already ostracizing him from the group. And then somebody else hears that this mom is making and her kid check in. So now this becomes a rule that all of us have to follow. It's like, God damn it, dude. You see what you did? You could have just said no to your mom, but because you acquiesced, now we're all sitting here with the same fucking structure. And I'm making shit up here, by the way. None of this really happened. But you can get the flavor of how it is that you're conditioned to accept circumstances that limit you. Now, it's not that you don't recognize that you're being limited even. You just recognize that you're okay with it. And that, to me, is why rules need to be thought of as, well, I don't want to say optional. So instead, I'm going to say that they're, okay, they're optional. Pause. Um, pause. They're optional because if they are compromising your humanity, then they're not rules. They're opportunities for you to stand for what you stand for. And it's no problem. That is the simple truth here is everything else is designed to keep you from standing for what you stand for. So whenever you are compromised in a position due to legislation, administration, or any other authoritative body that says, but no, you will act unkind. You will treat people with this level of misunderstanding and go no deeper because there will be no forgiveness for what those people have done. Well, when faced with that dilemma, when you literally are asking me to compromise the three most foundational stones in my makeup, well, yeah, I'll throw myself out the fucking 10th floor window before I'll accept your servitude in those roles and capacities because I have no humanity whereby to watch myself give away my entire soul on your demands. So if this is a fight to the death on these points of emphasis, I am willing to take a stand. And <clears throat> I never was someone who understood that I was destined to become a rule breaker because oh, I was such a good rule follower. Oh my God, I was such a good rule follower. I peed my pants because I was a rule follower in second grade. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. So I know from whence comes the thought of, yeah, but we can't do that. They told us not to. So again, YouTube, I know you've told me not to. But Sandy Hook was bullshit. And if we're not going to hold our investigative teams to a higher level of actual case management than what happened in that situation, well then, when do I get to speak about it? Because we're living in a land of incompetence. And I'm a pretty competent mofo who does not want to abide by that standard. So sit here and talk about Sandy Hook until we see things fixed. I will. And then I know that means you'll say, goodbye, we don't want to talk to you. You keep bringing up that damn thing in Connecticut. To which I say, that damn thing in Connecticut. We don't even know what happened. It might not even... Okay, it was probably in Connecticut. But that's about all you can say about it that's real. Because the rest of it... Well, Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook, Sandy Hook. It's bullshit. Pause. Oh, um, pause. Okay. There I am taking stuff personal again. I already forgave you for it. And here I am, acting passive-aggressive, bringing it back up. Huh. So, my pattern, right? I know, YouTube. I know, I know. I remember all those nights when I was just like, Oh, where did that video go? And you're 
were just like, I don't know, I didn't even know we had that video. What are you even talking about? And I'm like, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <sighs> and then you just gave me that stupid gray screen with the sideways face. And I thought, I don't need this abuse. So, having forgiven you and then holding that in your face, well, YouTube, I can see why you're pissed. That's fair. I shouldn't be this way. So, call this a moment for both of us to learn? Huh? Can we be, at least agree to go that far? Come on, YouTube, you're not perfect. You never were. I just made you feel like you were because, yeah, you kind of were. Pause. Oh, balls. So, when I'm thinking rules, I'm thinking, well, what are the first rules that you remember thinking, okay, here they are. They're teaching us some rules, and they want us to follow these. Well, don't say no, which turned into, oh, just say no. <laughs> don't say no. Oh, I love when my brain does that. Okay, just say no, which was Nancy Reagan's little thing. Not little thing, this is everywhere. Nancy Reagan's thing, just say no, which turned into dare, which turned into the fiasco that said, dare you to see all this drug use and not get tempted to use some yourself. And, uh, well, one can scream as to whose intentions got directly uh, supported in that daring situation. One can also say that in... If you didn't show me a bunch of people all high on cocaine, then I wouldn't think that getting high on cocaine was such a normal thing to do. Because before I went through with only the just say no stuff, I didn't see the dare stuff. They didn't actually bring the drugs into the classroom and snort them in front of us to tell us this is what you shouldn't be doing. And instead, they just said, losers use drugs, winners say no, or some shit like that. To which... I said no to marijuana until I was a senior in high school. And even then was terrified that I had smoked marijuana and I was probably on a doomed path to trash man duty in a land of waste. But <sighs> propaganda was something nobody discussed in the 80s because we hadn't legalized it yet for one, at least for use on our own citizens. But we hadn't, we hadn't, the necessary media conglomerates to morph the story yet that we didn't feel like truth was still out there, even if it was being massaged or, or ridiculed or, or overlooked entirely, you could find it. And people did. Right, CIA? I mean, you guys remember uh, Gary Webb, right? Right. <laughs> right. And before... Well, I don't want to. I don't want to invite the CIA's antagonistic ways by bringing up all of their sore spots. But what Gary Webb did was common and was the kind of thing that just you were used to. Every eight or twelve or fourteen months, there'd just be a scandal that would fucking unwind, right, Enron? And you would think, oh, fucking, look who was fucking around with the bugs again? Those white dudes in Texas. Right? I mean, not that, not that it couldn't have been, you know, white women, but it was dudes. It was definitely dudes. And the culture of greed and constant growth, well, what do you expect it to do? It's going to lead people to cook the books. It's going to lead people to pull shenanigans, and it's going to lead people to take advantage of stupid desperation because... What's that human's misery compared to my gain? It was the emergence of the individual matters more than anything else. And if you're not tending to your own house, what the fuck are you doing with your life? To which I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's my house? I got to tend to it. I got to, I got to get a rake or something. What do you tend with? Rakes? Is that what you use? Paint brushes? Oh, rollers, right? That work? Brushes? But in having been sent here to not disregard myself, I am pretty full of myself, but to see your glory with the ease that I do, to know your potential being limited as it is, to a version of yourself that even you know is stunted compared to what you could do. Well, with that gift, I'm so much more interested in what is the happenings around me that just getting engaged with others makes my day. 
helping anybody else out is the best. How'd your day go? It went great. Response, I have. I got to help somebody out today and they needed it. Bam, my day's made. 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 I'll go to sleep with big smiles on my face, hoping tomorrow can be just the same. And this isn't something that is selfless. I mean, okay, maybe at its highest Buddhist incarnation, of course it is, but I gain from every interaction that somebody's receiving my help. It offers me fulfillment. And because rarely do I have to engage anything other than kind and understanding, sympathetic uh, empathy in the moment, in those circumstances, I'm never pushed out of being myself. And in fact, find myself rising up in full embrace of this situation needing my entire humanity. So that level of disinterest in whether or not my day involves something that moves my life forward or something that keeps someone else's life from moving backward, they're the same thing to me. All of our circumstances could be maxed out and then we'd have achieved a position where I no longer feel like my agenda is driven by where there's the most need because we'll all have found destiny. But while we're mired in some level of unsatisfactory return, well, the best thing I can do is make sure that you believe in yourself enough that when I give you this help, the next time, though I'll be here if you need it, you may not even ask because you'll have moved that far forward. And so that's why I'm back, YouTube, for as long as you'll have me. I'll never give up on that is that which is the best, the most maxed out potential met by the group of humans that are 8675309 Earth humanity at this moment. Participating in this simulation has consequence for all of us. And having, well, having that fractured is always something that leaves work to repair. So I'm here to help YouTube. I have always been and will always be, even when you purge me from your life one more time. But not being a dare kid, I didn't even know what dare stood for. I knew, I knew it was drugs, or I assumed. Um, but I didn't know, so I came up with my own dare Thoughts? I thought it might be drugs are really evil. It's not. I thought drug addiction ruins everything. Could have been what D.A.R.E. was. It's not. I thought drink alcohol regularly, everybody, might be what D.A.R.E. stood for. I'm not sure it doesn't, but it. I couldn't prove that. I couldn't prove drunks are recognized exceptions. That one I couldn't find. Downgrading Americans regarding exceptionalism. I didn't see that, but I like that one. I mean, if I were going to use D.A.R.E. as an acronym, it would be for that. Or dictatorial aspirations readily exposed. I didn't find that one, but I think that was on a t-shirt that I maybe thought of in a dream. But deliberately avoiding recognized evidence, which I don't know that that was... Was that there in the 80s to be seen? Probably. Hard to say. But, I mean, drastic assumptions restricting enlightenment certainly applies. At least now, right? We can go that far. Dogmatic authority... Recruit or rewriting its evidence. You don't need the it's in there. It's not on my sheet. I just kind of was a little mouth mumbly. Dogmatic authorities rewriting evidence. Back after this message. Uh, are we really cutting to a message? No one's prepared. Uh, today's sponsor will be a, a half eaten apple. Do you know what is worse than an apple? Going back to a half-eaten apple four hours later. So, here's our advice. If you're going to, and we recommend you don't, if you're going to buy apples, well, eat them. Or bob them. Or caramelize them. Or throw them at the garage. Whatever. Apples suck. Bum, bum, bum. All right, back to the news. Apples do suck, though. Um... 
Don't assume reality exists. That could be dare. I dare you not to assume reality exists. Okay, I'll take truth. Um, how about uh, dystopian actions received enthusiastically? No, that's not what I want. It could have. Seems like it. Um, all right. So again, rules, right? Rules. Girls rule, boys drool. I think I saw in a magnet somewhere one time. And when I initially spoke of having fallen back into my YouTube ways for 24 hours, even though it was self-indulgently about myself, um, with that much me, myself, and Irene involved, there was just, I don't know, there was a feeling of what it, what it could still be. We haven't, you, you can't lose touch with what you enabled when you gave us access. You gave us the keys to the kingdom. And then you let us out that back gate to show us this wonderful wilderness area that everyone was like, oh, have you seen the wilderness area? You gotta see the wilderness area. And we were like, okay, we'll see the wilderness area. So you walked us out there and then you fucking locked the door again. We turned around, we're like, ah! God damn it. Why is every video now fucking cat video? Or something telling me that I can go get my degree in my off time. I mean, seriously, what happened to YouTube? <laughs> All right. Enough. Um, but I, I do see the value of the storytelling that YouTube enables. And I don't mean the lies. That's not what I meant. I mean, the narrative. We're 46 minutes and 40 seconds into this thing at this point, And this is the indulgence that YouTube offers. And having watched TikTok, well, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, whatever, having seen YouTube fall into the crevasse that is, yeah, but I only have 15 seconds of attention to give you, so if you can't get my attention in 15 seconds, I don't want to talk to you. Okay. All right. Well, 47 minutes into this thing, you can see that that's not who I am. We can't be effective storytellers, communicators, and sharers of deep thought without getting deep which you can't do with flash video presentation. Flash video presentation is fun, has its point, but reflective humanity at its best requires deep thought. You are here as a deep thinker. You've just been trained more like Flipper, that dolphin that always was eating fish. You want more fish, 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 fish. You can't appreciate just swimming in the oh-so-expansive ocean that's all around you. Because all you're doing is looking for another fish. And we robbed you of your contemplative momentum by switching it out for the dopamine hit that every next fish gives you. And having grown into a paradigm of everything's about the next fish you can find, including your own fucking life, well, yeah, now you're just filled with the nervous energy of thinking, I know the rules, but I don't even know that the game is based on any consistency among any of it. Wherever I see the rules applied, I feel like that was arbitrary. Well, deep cross conversational thought has left room for a lot of arbitrary judgments of snap kind. Because none of us are available for true dissection in a moment on TikTok. None of us can present a reasonable version of who we are in less than 15 minutes. In fact, none of us should aspire to want to. We were given a capacity to contemplate the idiosyncrasies. Idiosyncrasies? You're going to make words up? The idiosyncrasies of the universe are ours to mentally wander through and potentially solve to the extent that we know everything there is to know about the universe. But I don't think it's set up that way. I think it's set up because there will always be some level of mystery that your mind can engage to think, yeah, but what about this? You never run out of ways to think deeply unless you've been trained that the 
Only thing that's a bigger waste of time than going deep here is thinking about it at all. And that's where we're headed, where you won't even be able to recognize if you have a thought of original orientation or it's just another thing that you saw somewhere and can't remember exactly where now, but God damn it, it was important then. So I'm bringing it up now and I thought this would matter more to you than it does. But this little exchange of irrelevance is because that's what we're left with when we stop thinking we're capable of figuring it all out and the necessary work to get there is deep thought. So go have some. I'm going to go have my own deep thoughts. Mm, or I'm going to have some shallow ones. Nope, they're all going to be deep. I only want to think deeply. And I want to cut off the last 45 seconds of this recording because it's terrible. So I apologize, but never apologize again. Just get lost in deep thought. <laughs>